Hey guys, so I have this diagram right here and I wanted to show you guys um, what to do if your car is overheating. Now the first question you want to ask yourself is, hey, does it have any coolant inside of it? Now, usually, for the most cases, uh, it's just going to be an external coolant leak, which means that the coolant is going to be low when you check it. Now you open your radiator cap and look, and if the coolant level has dropped, you know you're leaking coolant. Now. If it has a visible leak, what you want, what you can do is use a pressure tester, uh, and basically that's like an adapter. It goes over your radiator cap, and you pump it. And if you can audibly hear a hissing sound, or see uh, where your leak is coming from. Now, if you don't have access to that, usually, uh, you know, it, it could be. Uh, if you're on the side of the road and your car is steaming, well, look for where the steam's coming from. It might be a busted hose. Most of the time, it's you know it could be just a exploded hose. Uh, the water pump could be seeping from its gasket, and usually, if that happens, you'll notice small drips from where the water pump is. On some cars, that's inside the timing cover, but on a lot of them, you can just see exactly where the water pump could be leaking. The radiator could be leaking. A lot of time when these radiators leak, you'll actually notice a lot of uh, dry coolant buildup along the fins to where it meets the actual tank. Wherever the leak is, just uh, if it doesn't have coolant, the first thing you want to do is look for a visible leak. Now, if there's no visible leak inside the engine bay, uh, it could be leaking from your heater core. Now, your heater core is basically what makes your heater inside your car work. Now, there's two hoses that run from your engine inside your car uh, and that run to your heater core which is basically like a little uh, radiator looking thing that sits inside your dashboard. Now this can also leak and when the heater cores leak it causes foggy windows, it causes a sweet smell inside the car because you'll be smelling the coolant. Basically you'll you sometimes you'll see a drip onto your carpet so check for make sure the heater core is not leaking if you don't see any exterior coolant leaks and it's been leaking. Um, and worst case scenario, uh, if you don't notice any visible leaks at all, it could be leaking inside the engine, uh, possibly from a head gasket. Uh, when that happens, you'll notice white smoke in the exhaust because it's burning the coolant through the combustion chamber. And you'll notice uh, oil and coolant will be mixed a lot of the time because the oil passageways and the coolant passageways mix and uh, usually... The oil would be like a milkshakey color, like kind of like chocolate milk, and uh, the coolant is going to smell like oil and kind of have like a lot of black stuff in it. It'd be kind of nasty. Uh, anyways, uh, so look for that. Also, um, if it has a coolant leak, uh, you can add coolant. If you don't notice any leaks, add coolant. Uh, run it for a little bit, see if the coolant level drops again. Because sometimes the coolant system just ha cooling system just has some air bubbles trapped in it, a uh, previous person didn't bleed it properly, so you can just add some coolant and uh, drive the car around, see how it does. Uh, and if it's still leaking, then go ahead and look into it further. Okay, so let's say your car has coolant in it. It's completely topped off, but your car is still overheating. Um, if your car is overheating at idle, it could be one of two things, usually. It could be the radiator fan, or it could be a partially clogged radiator. Now, most of the time, it is the radiator fan, if it's just overheating at idle. Um, so when you start hitting the gas, it'll, uh, it'll start to uh, cool off. It's usually the radiator fan, because... The water pump works when you hit the gas, which is the next thing I'm going to go towards. So, if it overheats under load, but it's okay at idle, then you know that it's probably the water pump not working well. Because the water pump is what really cools the engine while it's running at higher RPM. So, let's say you're on the highway, driving along highway drives, and it always tends to run a little bit hot. Well, chances are your water pump isn't working very well. Now, let's say your car has coolant in it but it's always overheating well uh, it could be still a head gasket issue but usually when you look at your coolant if it's topped off you'll still notice that it is very dirty it looks contaminated with oil most of the time 
Um, or there could be a lot of air getting into your cooling system. Um, so either way, it could be that worst case scenario. If it's overheating all the time, it can also be clogged passageways in your engine. A lot of cars like uh, the older Fords or Chevys were using coolant that caused the, in the system to rust. Rust in the cooling system can cause your car to overheat all the time within the actual block itself or the passageways in the head. The uh, thermostat could be stuck closed. Um, that's the cheap part. Usually when the thermostat is stuck closed, the upper radiator hose won't be very hot. It's Your upper radiator hose is supposed to be very hot at all times. Um, it could be a very clogged radiator. The radiator itself could be clogged up. Or it could be a temperature sensor. Now, um, if it is a coolant temperature sensor, uh, there's usually two coolant temperature sensors in your car. There's the coolant temperature sensor that tells your gauge uh, what to read, and there's a coolant temperature sensor that tells the computer uh, what to do. Usually. Now, this isn't for all cars, but a lot of cases, if your temperature gauge is reading cold all the time, and your car is running perfectly normal, uh, and actually is not overheating, or it's not completely cold, or whatever, and your gauge is just acting erratically, uh, you might even throw a check engine code. Well, a lot of the time, this is just the sensor. Uh, so, yeah, don't worry about that. Just check the sensor. Um, coolant temperature sensors usually don't go bad. A lot of the time, it's like the wiring to the sensor, or uh, let's say somebody was doing some engine work to it, and uh, they, uh, you know snap the sensor off because these sensors are pretty fragile they're easy to kind of snap off but uh if they haven't been tampered with for the most part coolant temperature sensors usually don't go bad uh unless you own a volkswagen in which case it will go bad now on volkswagens uh there's actually a coolant level sensor and uh that's in the actual uh and actually a lot of cars have this too but there's a coolant level sensor, like Volvos have it. Um, it's in the actual coolant reservoir, and uh, it basically tells you the level of the coolant. So, of course, um, if that sensor goes bad, it'll be telling you you have no coolant, even though you do. Uh, so it could be a coolant level sensor or a coolant temperature sensor. So I wrote temp sensor, but you could also you know, include the coolant level sensor as well. Sometimes you have to replace the entire uh, overflow tank just to fix that issue, and it's kind of a pain. Um, I think I've concluded for, uh, overheating issues. But yeah, basically, if you're your average Joe, uh, you know, on the side of the road, um, first of all, open your radiator cap, fill it with water, drive it, uh, make sure that it is still leaking, and then if it is leaking, try to see if you can have any visible leaks, first of all, because this is usually what 99% of the time, you'll, you know, see something leaking. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this video helped. Um, 